Welcome to this video learning session. When you complete the session, you will be able to create DFD symbols and diagrams. In this session, you'll learn about DFDs and how to use them as modeling tools, how to create and connect DFD symbols, and how you can use a case tool to create DFDs. The letters DFD stand for Data Flow Diagram. DFDs are modeling tools that show how a system transforms input data into useful information. DFDs contain four symbols called processes, data flows, data stores, and entities, also called external entities. Here's a typical DFD. The rounded rectangles show processes. The flat rectangle shows a data store. The shaded boxes show entities. And the arrows show data flows. First, let's get familiar with DFD symbols. We'll start with processes. A process performs one or more tasks or functions. Each process gets a number and a descriptive name. To function properly, a process needs one or more inputs and one or more outputs. Here's an example of input and output data. The Apply Payment process receives invoice amount and payment data and produces output called Account Update. A process can calculate sales trends, reorder inventory when supplies get low, or verify a customer's credit status. We can use a flowchart to show what goes on inside a process. A process can contain many other functions that are not visible until you open the process and look inside. In this example, the Check for Overtime process determines whether an employee worked more than 40 hours. If so, it runs an internal process called Calculate Overtime Pay. The Check for Overtime process has weekly hours and pay rates as input data and produces overtime pay as output data. A data store symbol represents data that is sent to or received from one or more processes. For example, instructors save student test scores to calculate final grades, and companies keep payroll data for year-end W-2 forms. An entity symbol represents someone or something that interfaces with the information system. In this example, the entity is a customer. An entity can supply data to the system or receive data from the system, or both. In a school registration system, entities might include student, registrar, instructor, and course. In a corporate sales system, entities might include customer, sales rep, accounting department, and warehouse. A data flow allows data to move from one part of the system to another, like a cable in a communications network. Data flows can handle input, output data, or both. A data flow can include just one data item, such as a checkout register total amount, or it can include a large set of data items, such as class grades for an entire semester. Now that you're familiar with the DFD symbols, you need to use them properly. For example, a process must have both input and output. Here are some correct examples. On the other hand, here are some incorrect examples. In the first example, there is output but no input. In the second example, there is input but no output. In the third example, there is input and output, but the input could not logically produce the output. There are rules for data stores, too. Normally, a data store must have at least one input flow and at least one output flow. Here are three correct examples. But these are incorrect. In the first example, 
a data store must connect to a process. It cannot connect directly to another data store or to an entity. The next two examples are incorrect because a data store must have input and output unless the data is fixed, like a tax table. Here are four correct ways to connect entities. An entity only can connect to a process. Notice that an entity can send data, receive data, or both. These examples are incorrect because an entity can't connect to another entity or to a data store. Here's a recap of the rules. This might be a good time to pause and review them. In part three, you'll learn how to use a case tool to create DFDs. The letters C-A-S-E stand for Computer Aided Software Engineering. Case tools are powerful programs that analysts use to speed up the system's development process. Let's start with a diagram that was created with drawing tools found in Microsoft Office applications. The diagram shows part of a payroll system. The three processes are calculate base pay, check for overtime, and run payroll. The three data stores are work hours, pay rates, and total payroll. The two entities are an employee who receives a pay stub and a bank where direct deposits are made. This example shows how to use and connect DFD symbols properly. Now we're ready to create the same DFD with a case tool called Visible Analyst. First, click the data store symbol, place it on the screen, and label it Work Our Data. Then, add a second data store and label it Pay Rate Data. Next, we need two processes, Calculate Base Pay and Check for Overtime. With these symbols in place, let's see how data flows between the process and the data stores. Calculate Base Pay and Check for Overtime both use input data flows called weekly hours and pay rates. When you connect the symbols, Visible Analyst prompts you for a name for the data flows. We have input. What about output? The output flows are called Base Pay and Overtime Pay. Both data flows go to the total payroll data store. The total pay data flow becomes input to the run payroll process, which produces two outputs, a pay stub to the employee and a direct deposit to the bank. This example shows how case tools can help you model and document a system. In this session, you learned what DFDs are and how to use them as modeling tools, how to create and connect DFD symbols, and how to use a case tool to create DFDs. For more information, you can refer to the textbook or your student study tool. Now it's your turn to apply your skills and check your work. For background information, tasks to complete, and sample answers, go to the Management Information Systems Coursemate at www.cengagebrain.com. Select this text and navigate to the video learning sessions. Thanks for attending this video learning session.